This recent paper describes how infusing biomaterial can potentially treat inflamed and injured tissue, such as the brain, heart, and lungs, from the inside out. So, like the biomaterial used in this study, let me digest the key findings from this paper for you. Starting with what these biomaterials are, how it was tested in the paper, and look at how these findings can be therapeutically translated as regenerative medicines. So firstly, what are these biomaterials that we're talking about? Well, when you were at school, you were probably taught something like the body is made of cells, those cells make up tissues, and those tissues make up organs, and those organs make up organ systems, and those systems work together as a team to support your body, right? Well, sure, but it misses an important point. That is, it gives the impression that just cells make up tissues, which is, don't get me wrong, part of the story, or well, I should say part of the tissue, but another part of the tissue that's really important for its function is the extracellular matrix that is unique to each tissue type. The extracellular matrix, or ECM as I'll continue to say, is the natural scaffolding and framework in which the cells of the tissue reside. A perhaps terrible analogy is to say that the ECM is like the cement that holds the bricks of a wall together. And it's a bad analogy because it's not just a structural component, the ECM can also mediate biochemical cues that can alter a cell's behaviour and vice versa. Cells secrete factors that actually compose this ECM, and this all creates the tissue's microenvironment. So it's important. And therefore, when one talks of damaged tissue or inflamed tissue, you now know that it may not just mean that the cells are damaged, it is also possible that this extracellular matrix has also become damaged. And in fact, stiffening of the ECM through glycation, aggregation and cross-linking, and the downstream physical consequences of this, are now being explored heavily in links with ageing. So what if we can restore, replace, recover, help out the ECM when the tissue is inflamed or wounded? Would that help one recover faster from injury, and down the line have any potential for regenerative therapies? Well, at least for the former, this has already been tested in humans and it was done by using ECM biomaterial, effectively isolating components of the ECM from tissue samples, removing all the cells, doing some digestion and fractionating the sample, and then injecting it back. In this first in human study, to determine the safety and feasibility of this approach, 15 patients who sustained moderate damage in their left ventricle wall following a heart attack received a self-assembling ECM developed by Karen Christman and colleagues that remains liquid at room temperature, yet forms a gel at body temperature. Here the patients had endomyocardial injections, that is to say it was a relatively invasive way of applying the ECM hydrogels. The biomaterial had to be injected into the patient's endocardium through a catheter, using an electrochemical mapping system. And while the study showed that there's potential value in this approach, They had to use this approach instead of just injecting it into the blood because this gel poses a risk to aggregating by, well, gelling and blocking the vascular system. And not only is this procedure quite invasive, but because of this method, it cannot be used to treat patients immediately after the event. So what can be done to improve this method and hopefully then downstream therapeutic application? Well, that brings us back to this recent paper intravascularly infused extracellular matrix as a biomaterial for targeting and treating inflamed tissues. This has come out again from the Christman's lab, who was involved in the above trial, and here they've described something called infusible ECM that can instead be injected intravenously, so straight into the vascular system, which would therefore be less invasive than the previous approach. So how did they do it? Well, before we get to that, let's just first go over the procedure of how they actually attain this ECM hydrogel. It first involves chopping up heart tissue. In this paper, they take it from pig hearts. So we get heart tissue, and the first step is we chop it up into tiny pieces, and we put it into a bath, like a beaker right here, and stir it up with uh, detergent so that to remove all the cellular contents. After a couple days, Uh, We rinse it out to remove all the detergents, and all we really have left are the structural proteins that make up a tissue. So we take that and we freeze dry it into this styrofoam-like substance. It's really light and crispy, Uh, so it's freeze dried. And then we take this and we mill it into a fine powder that looks like this. 
Um, we take that and digest it with an enzyme to liquefy it. And you can see that there's liquid at the bottom of this and this little bead is just stirring it up and keeping everything well mixed. And then finally, we take the liquid form of this and we inject it into the heart, into damaged heart tissue. And once the liquid hits body temperature, it forms a gel that looks like this and it no longer flows anymore. And so that is the approach used to create ECM hydrogels. But in this paper, they make an infusible ECM gel. The additional steps involve spinning the sample very fast, such that all the bigger proteins that make the biomaterial more prone to gelling pellet to the bottom of the tube. They can then just keep the so-called supernatant that contains more of the smaller weight proteins. As this protein gel shows, they've removed effectively the high weight proteins that includes many larger collagen proteins. And then the supernatant is sterile filtered, lyophilized and resuspended for administration. <laughs> And so unlike the earlier formulation of the ECM where it gelled in tissue after injection, this infusible ECM didn't gel when incubated at body temperature in vitro. And the authors also show that this infusible product is hemocompatible. That is to say that they could mix it with donor human blood to see if there'd be any complications with combining this with the blood system. And they showed that that wasn't to be the case. It was so-called hemocompatible. And so that's the biomaterial but does it actually have any therapeutic value? Well, remember I said here that they want to have an intravascular infusion delivery method. Now, an intravascular method would effectively transport the biomaterial throughout the body, but they want it to go to the regions of damage. So they firstly tested this in vitro, so in cell culture with endothelial cells, that are the cells that make up the vascular lining. And they did this with untreated controls, scratched and therefore damaged cells, or inflamed cells. And by staining that infusible ECM red, what you can clearly see is that the biomaterial in red was binding when the cells were injured or inflamed. But obviously, we kind of want to know if this works in vivo, so in the, in the body. And they did this by testing it in different animal models, both in acute and chronic diseases. Here they tested acute myocardial infarction, traumatic brain injury, and pulmonary arterial hypertension. In all cases, they saw that this infusible ECM, when delivered to the animals, filled the gaps between the endothelial cells, and it didn't bind to the neighbouring healthy tissue, showing that it was localising to the regions of damage. And they further examined this in myocardial infarction in both rat and pig models, and saw that it reduced vascular leakiness in the tissue and improved cardiac function. So to quote Chrisman, this new form of ECM biomaterial can be delivered minimally invasively through either intracoronary infusion or even simple intravenous infusion to target areas of damaged or inflamed tissue to stimulate tissue repair. The unexpected finding that the infusible ECM binds to leaky vascular and reduces vascular leakage, which is known to exacerbate damage in the heart after myocardial infarction, was particularly exciting as it opened up the possibility of using this material to treat not only the heart, but also many other tissues where there is inflammation and leaky vasculature. That said, there are still some many unanswered questions with this approach. Firstly, what is the actual mode of action of the material besides the fact it just seems to be binding to the regions of damage? What actually composes the biomaterial and what are the main protein or peptide components that are contributing to its function? If it is filling the gaps between the endothelial cells, could a synthetic material with similar function be developed? As in the study, they derived the material from a pig's heart, which while is available, is something that many may have ethical issues with. And would ECM therefore derived from other organs also perform similarly for sealing of leaky vessels? Does it have to come from the heart? But as described by one of the co-authors, Ryan Reeves, an interventional cardiologist, the logistics of a randomised clinical trial of treating patients with an acute myocardial infarction with this novel injectable material would not be very complex. The same catheters that are used to diagnose and treat an acutely occluded coronary artery could be used to deliver the infusible ECM or a placebo. So it seems sometime soon we could really see application of healing the body from the inside out. Now, while I don't know you who is listening inside out, YouTube thinks it does and reckons you will enjoy this video here. So with that, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.